It's a rainy gray day here in New England, but luckily for me, I love those types of days as long as I'm inside. Hey everyone, if you're new here, if you've just come over from Sophia's channel, hi, my name is Jennifer and I was a makeup artist for Chanel half a lifetime ago. I'm a long time luxury aficionado, everything from makeup and beauty to fashion and ready to wear. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you do, it will make Ellie very happy. And if you don't, it's gonna make her very sad. Today we're going to take a look at some of my favorites from the recent collections. We have Chanel, Tom Ford, Dior, and Guerlain. And I kind of wanted to go through and talk about what I'm using from the recent collections, what I think are the best aspects of the recent collections, and kind of go into why. I think a lot of times here on social media people talk about new releases and then you never see them again. Or if you see them again, it's in a wrap-up video saying, you know, this was bad, this was good. But we don't really get a chance very often to talk about why you really like something as a content creator, so I thought I would take a moment to do just that. So what I have on as foundation today, this is the Makeup Forever HD Glow Foundation. This is not new, this is not one of the new releases. I continue to wear this foundation. I think it's great for folks that like a little bit more of a glow. Maybe if you have a little bit more dull skin like I do, drier skin, I think it's fantastic. I'm wearing it today instead of my Lisa Eldridge Skin Enhancer because I'm gonna be doing a video where I swatch nine of the Tom Ford lipsticks and I need a foundation that's a little bit, you know, not heavier, but like a foundation instead of a skin tint because your lips get <laughs> a little red in the process and so I need to be able to put a little bit of foundation that matches the rest of my face as I do the swatches. I'll probably have that up as a short here on YouTube and then maybe over on Instagram so you can see it. So that's a great foundation. Absolutely love that. My blush, the Chanel Rose Radiant. And as you can see when I put it on, I put it on with my fingers. I go very, very lightly with it. I don't use it to its full capacity. I'm one of those people that if you've watched for a while, you know I don't like a ton of blush because I have rosacea. Uh, I've spent a lot of money on lasers to try to get rid of the rosacea to the best that I can. And so when I see like redness on my skin or even, you know, pink on my skin, I, I, I kind of just recoil, <laughs> like, no, um, because, you know, I've worked so hard to try to get my skin in, in good shape so that I don't have any of that redness. So, you know, for me, blush is not something that I love. I love having a little bit of blush. I love having a luminous blush. I'm not a matte blush person. Again, my skin is a little bit drier. So I love the look of the Chanel blushes, but I use them and, and all blushes, to be honest, sparingly. I really feel with these Chanel cream to powder blushes, your fingers are your best bet. I think they work beautifully with your skin um, on your fingers because it the warmth of your skin actually kind of creates this warmth and creaminess of the cream. And then you can kind of press it into the skin and then it turns into the powder. You can absolutely use brushes with the formula, but I, what I tell you is if you use a natural hair brush, you're going to get a much lighter look and a synthetic brush is going to be better if you're looking for more pigment. Again, it all depends on what you like and how you want to, you know, use the tools for your look, but those would be my tips based on uh, how I've been playing around with it for the last couple weeks. Then as contour, I did not use a bronzer today. I felt like we're doing a very cool look today. Got purple, purple everywhere. And in order to keep the coolness of the look, I really didn't want to use a bronzer. Even a cool bronzer like Tara from Tom Ford or, or Jones Road, which has a very cool bronzer, which I actually think of as blush, but there's a number of them out there. But I really just wanted to keep it, you know, extremely cool toned. So what I did is I used the Dior Contour Stick. This is in shade light. Um, and you can see the way that I put it on today. I put it on directly on my face because I wanted to show you guys, there's two different ways, well, there's many different ways, but there's two different ways that I generally do this. Sometimes I draw it directly on my face, which I did in this video. And then I take my Charlotte Tilbury brush, which you can still get actually, this brush I've had for quite some time, uh, and then blended it into my skin. I believe that when you put it directly on the brush and then use the brush on your face, you get a better look. I tend not to draw it on my face 
because I feel like it, it's harder to blend in and it messes up the makeup underneath. If you put it directly on the brush and then put the brush on your face, I think that's a better technique. But sometimes I'm just like a little lazy and I just want to put it directly on my face and it works fine. So what I want to say about this is that the Dior products, the contour sticks, I have them in light and tan. The tan is more of a bronzer on me and the foundation stick are excellent products. They are very smooth. They go, I, I have not had any problems with using them on anyone. I think they're really good. The only thing I would say is the, the cool, this, this light shade is very cool. Like it's the coolest contour stick I have. And that's saying a lot because I've collected quite a few. Uh, and I've done videos where I've compared them to like the Westman Atelier and the Rare Beauty. And this is cooler. So if you're somebody who really hates that mushroom color or that mushroom color really does not work with your skin tone, you're going to want to skip the light and go to the tan. The tan is much warmer. Again, I have videos on all of those things um, with detail, but you can see the, the shade here. And of course, you can see me putting it on about the lipstick before we get to the eyes. So this is the new Gourlan lipstick. This is the one that came with the Pucci collection. I didn't have the lipstick that was launched with it when I did my Pucci Gourlan uh, video. And I didn't buy it right away because it's this really purpley fuchsia color. And I thought, to be honest, it would contrast way too much with my hair. And honestly, I don't think that at all. I think it's beautiful on. It's a plum. It has a little bit of an undertone of fuchsia. <laughs> it looks, it makes your teeth look nice. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good shade. I think it's vibrant enough and deep enough and pigmented enough to work on a whole host of folks. And the formula of the Guerlain, which of course they changed because they changed the cases, which I'm again, still salty about. I'll let it go after 2005, guys. When 2005 comes around, I'll stop mentioning it. But um, let me have a couple months of being salty. Uh, the formula is beautiful, actually. It's really nice. It's very silky. It reminds me a little bit of the new Tom Ford formula. The Tom Ford formula is still better, but it's a really nice formula. It goes on extremely easy. It's good, and it's worth picking up if, if you're so inclined. This shade, though, like I said, is really nice, especially if you like those plummy magenta kind of shades, this is going to be for you. All right. So the eyes. Now I said that I promised uh, all of you that I would do the purple mascara, the amethyst mascara, and I have it on right now. Now it's probably a little hard to see. I'll make sure I zoom in. But what I would say is uh, I did use the primer underneath the white, you know, primer. We'll see how it works. We'll see if it flakes. I will have an update. I'll make sure it's down below in this video. I'll wear it all day. And you know, when I go to edit the video, I'll give you my, my thoughts, but I, I like the way the allure goes on. Like it's, it's a nice mascara when I put it on, like it, it's a lengthening mascara. It, it covers each lash. It's not really a volume, volumizing mascara. And that's what I tend to like, to be honest. But the mascara itself is fine when it goes on. It's actually very pretty. And the amethyst is a nice color if you're looking, especially if you want your eyes to look whiter, the purple is going to do that. And it's, it's, it's nice. It's, it's a flattering shade. Um, it's deep enough that it's not like a neon color or a, uh, you know, lavender. It's amethyst. So it's purple. Um, it's got some deepness to it. And I, I actually think it looks quite nice on the eyes. I think it's, it's flattering. So again, the only caveat will be, does it flake? Because it's flaked before. Um, every time I've used the Allure Noir, it's flaked, but we'll see what happens with the primer underneath. However, again, I would say I personally am not going to wear this amethyst mas mascara unless I'm doing a cool tone look, a gray, a purple, maybe even a black, you know, like a deep black look with purple lashes. Or I was doing false lashes. Someone mentioned this in one of my comments, like they wear false lashes and they put the colored mascara on the ends or throughout the lash. That I totally get. But for me, I, my sister, uh, I've said this before, my sister would call me boring. I'm not really like an adventurous uh, mas makeup wearing person outside. Like I would definitely do it for the camera and I've done editorial looks and I think they're fun, but I wouldn't wear it to like dinner. <laughs> Or work. 
So that's the thing. So just like as an everyday thing, uh, you know, no, probably not. But there's a lot of you out there that would. So it depends on, it depends on your own, you know, aesthetic. But the eyeshadow is an amalgamation of things. So I pulled two products. I pulled the, as you can probably guess, the Divination Chanel Quad. And I used this shade all over the lid and then this shade as liner and into the crease. You'll see it um, in the video. And then I used the Metallic Mauve by Tom Ford, which is stunning. I did an entire look with this and a video with this. I just used that shade as liner and like winged it up a little on the edge. And that was it. I just used the tiniest, tiniest bit of that. And I'm going to use the, the sparkly shade over the look in just a second and show you that. But I wanted you to see just sort of the monochromatic, I got a little mascara on my eyelid, oh well, um, the monochromatic kind of look on the lid um, with the mascara. And that's, you know, I think a really beautiful look. And as you can see when I'm, you know, putting it on, the mattes are really opaque in the Chanel quad. They go on beautifully. They're, they're very smooth. They're very silky. They're not my favorite mattes, though. The Tom Ford mattes in the creme formula and in this one are actually nicer and they're, they're easier to use. But the Chanel ones are really good. Um, they're they're not they're not as good as the Tom Fords. They're not as good as like some of the Clay de Peau shades. They're not as good. I, I I there's a number of mattes that I, I I really do like better than the Chanel's. But but I would say for most people you're probably not gonna really notice that. You're just gonna be like, oh these are really nice. And the reason I say that is not not to be insulting. It's just that I'm using so much makeup from so many brands that I start to see like just the infinitesimal differences between one and two. Most people are going to be, this is going to be great. I mean, it's a really nice formula. Um, it's just a little less silky and a little less creamy than I would like. My favorites uh, were the Dior of old when they put the aloe and the pine oil in them. I loved the, the mattes that were in there and then they changed it. So that's not really available anymore. But the cremes in the Tom Ford are beautiful. And this new formula, Metallic Mauve from Tom Ford, I don't know what formula it is because they haven't told us, but I do like the, the, the mattes in here. They're very, very creamy. So I'm going to take one of the, this like, lavendery purpley shade and I just want to show you you know you can put this on top and you're going to get a much more dramatic look a more sparkly look it would be very easy to, to turn this into something uh, you know more evening appropriate or more dramatic for daytime if that's your thing and, you know, you could use a lot more. You can take the shades and deepen up the look, whatever you want to do. But these two quads actually work very well together. Now, of course, I did not use the green shades or the ochre shade that's in the divination quad. And I said when I did the review, more than likely, I'm going to use the purple shades together and the green and ochre together. And that's just how I'm going to do it. And that's just me you can mix the four shades together and actually have a very pretty look, but it's just not, it's not, again, it's not my aesthetic. So I think the, the quad is worth picking up, but you have to remember, you know, there are other purpley lavender shades out there, like the metallic mauve, that's all purple, all mauve. And if you really love purple and, you know, that's your thing, I pick up the Tom Ford one, personally. That's my take. Um, from from the from the two of them, but they work beautifully together, and I think they look very very nice. The mascara, just to show you, this is the Allure, and I'll have a close up of the um, of the brush and the color. But you know, it's if you if the Allure works for you, and I, I had some people write in the comments that the Allure worked for them. That's awesome, and that's great. The the formula seems good when I put it on. Um, I don't have any issues with the the formula as it goes on the, the lashes, it just seems at the end of the day, I get all these flakes. And, you know, again, it could be, it could be user error. It could be just my type of lashes. Maybe it, it only works for me with a primer, which I tried this time. So I'll give you that update. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to tell you on that. The 
powder. So I did use, and again, you can see this in the video, I used the lavender blush. Now, I I still, I understand why it's a blush. Like, I, I get how some people are using this as a blush, and I showed it as a blush on my face. But for me, I just, it doesn't really work for me as a blush. It just for, again, this is my aesthetic. This is what I, you know, my looks. I use this with a puff, and I use it underneath my eyes, uh, here in my T-zone, like on my chin, to sort of brighten up my face. And I absolutely love it for that. It is my new favorite lavender powder. And uh, because I like a pressed powder, I like a pressed powder because then I can bring it with me. Loose powders, even if you have like the little travel ones, I don't know, like I have expensive bags. I don't, you know, I don't want it spilling. I mean, I can put things in a little, like a little bag inside a bag, but sometimes I forget to do that. So a pressed powder, just I, I prefer. And again, my skin is dry. And so, you know, I think it, it it's very easy for powder to look cakey on me. And this does not. It does not throughout the day. It does not look cakey. It doesn't settle into lines. It's very brightening. It's very pretty. Um, and when I say pretty, I mean like it's it's a pretty shade. It's it's a flattering shade. It works on most people. I've heard from numerous folks that have much deeper skin tones than, than I do that say it's not ashy. It could be ashy on someone, so certainly let me know. But the folks that I've heard from have said it's not. And I think it's because it has this true lavender, not white or gray. It's this purple, it's a true lavender which has that purple. Um, it's almost like the shade of my, of my shirt. So I think that's why it's working. And I think that's why it's working for a lot of folks as a blush and as a setting powder for someone like me who's, who's very pale. So those are the things that I have taken from the recent releases and really enjoy. Like I have been using them more often than I thought I would. The, the lavender blush, I thought, to be honest, I was like, no, I'm never going to use that. I'm using it all the time because I'm using it as, <laughs> as finishing powder. Uh, Metallic Mauve Tom Ford, I waited, I waited way past when most people bought it because a lot of content creators got it very early and I could have, and I was like, nah, I got it. But I love it. Love that quad. The Divination Quad, um, I initially was like, how, you know, how often am I going to really use this? But I will say, I do love the purple shades together and the ochre and green together as looks. Like, I do use it, and I have been, both both the green and the purple. So I really like that. The Guerlain lipstick is much nicer than I thought it was going to be color-wise. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's, that's actually quite nice. And the Dior contour sticks, it's not that I... It's not that I was like, oh, I'm going to hate them, but I was just kind of like, I have, I have the Westman, I have the Rare Beauty, but this shade is unique for me because again, it's so light. It really, it's quite, it's really quite perfect for, for what I, what I wanted. Now the mascara is not something that I've been, you know, wearing. This is the first time that I'm using it, but I did promise you that I would, uh, put it in a video and, and show you what it looked like. So I'm keeping my promise, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens and we're going to keep our fingers crossed and, and hope that it works. So I would love to hear from all of you. You know, if, if you picked up some of these new releases, what are your favorites? What are your, why do you like them? Like the cream to powder blush for Chanel. I like it because it's easy to manipulate and you can go light. You can go deep. I like the purple blush because I'm using it as finishing powder. I like the Girl On Lipstick because it's brightening for my face and easy to use and it doesn't really settle into lines, which is, you know, that's, that's, that's important. The Dior Stick, I like it because the color just is not something that I have in my collection and it's so smooth and easy to blend out that I can just sort of whack it on my face when I don't really feel like being precise and it still works beautifully. The Tom Ford Quad and the Chanel Quad I like because they're easy to use and I don't have to overthink it. And what I mean by that is there are some products that although the final look can be great, I have to use particular brushes to make them work or I have to make sure that I'm being careful so they don't fly all over my face or there's a lot of fallout from the glitter or whatever it is. These are easy to use. They they don't have a fallout. Well, I mean, they might have a little fallout if you don't tap out your brush, but they're easy to use. They're simple. Yes, the, the, the Chanel quad has the, the corresponding, you know, the purples and then the greens. But if you're using them like I do with two purples and then the two greens, you're fine. Like, 
if you don't like the combination is what I mean. And the Tom Ford metallic mauve is beautiful. Like it's a really gorgeous color story. Do I probably have it somewhere else, especially in uh, Dior? Probably. I probably do. But it doesn't mean that I like it any less. And if you don't have an enormous collection like myself, uh, which most people, yeah, that's probably most people, then I think you're you're really going to enjoy it. And then we'll, we'll find out about the mascara. We'll have more notes soon. So again, I really would love to hear from all of you. What are you liking? Why are you liking it? What do you, we're going to do, you know, a video of things that I'm not particularly liking as well. We're going to get into that, but I thought I would do a positive one before I did a negative one. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in another video really soon.